Ahead on our news tonight, on the defense. Since nobody has side of their, his contract, I don't know how you criticize something that you don't know the details of. The National Security Minister sets the record straight over a crime consultant's hiring. Plus, day in court. Find out the detailed court filing by the former head of BPL. And later, reaping the regatta harvest. Businesses on Exuma speak on the uptick. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kendino Knowles. Rodney Monker has been hired as an independent contractor in the Ministry of National Security and not as a consultant. The clarification coming from the National Security Chief, who Jared Hayes tells us is on the defense tonight over criticism about Monker's hiring. Yeah, no, he's not appointed as a consultant. He's appointed as an independent contractor. And since nobody has side of their, his contract, I don't know how you criticize something that you don't know the details of. National Security Minister Wayne Monroe says he's still waiting to see Monker's contract to find out exactly how much he'll be earning. Some have criticized the decision to engage Monker, citing his tone and controversial statements he makes on women's issues. Somebody commenting on what he is set to do when they don't know what he is set to do. And it's, as simple, and it's as simple as that. If we would simply not jump to conclusions, things might be a lot better. Last week, Director of Communications and Office of the Prime Minister, Latre Ramming, confirmed reports that Monker was engaged as a crime consultant. Ramming said the move was justifiable due to Monker's extensive knowledge of inner city communities. Monroe was asked about Monker's qualifications today. His credentials are for the last 30 years. He's been a community activist. From, from the last 30 years, from walking students out of CC sweeting over school conditions, to walking out and garnering the support of some people who are in government, were in government, and sensible, upstanding people in this country, his credentials speak for themselves. But Monroe also appeared regularly on Monker's talk show. Last week, Ramming was asked about the conflict and said key persons were needed to engage communities on crime. Monroe says it's something that the major political parties agreed two years ago. There's a commitment to a broad level of community engagement. That is something the PLP agreed to, the FNM agreed to, the DNA agreed to. And so it's just very simple. The only thing I think about criticisms of someone having a job when you don't know what the job entails is you must therefore be jumping to conclusions. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. Meantime, Prime Minister Philip Davis responding again to criticism over the hiring of Rodney Moncar as a consultant in the Ministry of National Security. What's the conflict of interest? Um, I don't know that uh, the, the Minister of National Security was being paid on the show. Right. He was uh, he was one of his sidekicks on the show, and he, in his vision from where he's sitting, he sees he he, he became even better acquainted with Mr. Manka and better acquainted with his talents and what he can do. Last week, former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis raised the issue of Manker being hired, pressing the government for more details. A day later, communications director in the office of the Prime Minister, Latre Ramming, confirming the consultancy, saying details of the appointment would have to come from the Minister of National Security. Today, the Prime Minister giving this rationale for Monker's hiring. Any of you who would have known uh, know, uh, Rodney Monker, you know that he is the salt of the earth. He understands he's from an area called Black Village. He understands and he interacts with persons um, on the streets. And we feel that he's a fine person, having had that voice um, out there to be able to, to assist in de-escalating matters on the street. Meantime, a Friday court filing revealing in detail the events leading up to former BPL chairperson Darnell Osborne's dismissal from the company. Jared Higgs is on the story. In her wrongful dismissal lawsuit, former chairman of the board of directors at Bahamas Power and Light, Darnell Osborne, outlined the power struggle between board members and company directors during 2018. In her witness statement, Osborne says she was in the post around 10 months when her relationship with then-works minister Desmond Bannister began to change. 
She says Bannister started to question her about issues surrounding carving out an area of a Shell Power Purchase Agreement. Another issue was whether BPL CEO Whitney Hasty had the authority to hire and fire BPL executives without board approval, a topic that came up at a meeting on May 18, 2018. Osborne stated, In this meeting, I, along with other board members, disagreed with Mr. Hasty and maintained that this statutory power was held by the directors of the board. However, Hasty and Bannister saw things differently. Osborne said she requested a legal opinion, which Bannister criticized as a waste of money. She said, in response, Minister Bannister threatened to demand my resignation or terminate me if I did not change my position. On Friday, August 3, 2018, Minister Bannister summoned me to his office and criticized my leadership style. Osborne says her reputation suffered after Bannister claimed that she constantly petitioned him for a $300,000 per year salary. Another misleading statement that she tried to get retracted was an allegation by Bannister that Osborne was sending hundreds of dollars in makeup bills to BPL when the bill was for 30 to 40 employees, was for BPL's purpose, and was a one-off. Osborne said that as a result of the comments by the then minister, she, as a certified public accountant, is subject to the threat of investigations by both local and international professional accounting bodies, of which she is a member, and is subject to further embarrassment due to her previous positions as president and chairman of the Ethics and Investigation Committee of Bahamas Institute of Chartered Accountants. She says, I'm unable to obtain any suitable employment given the fact that these allegations continue to hang over my head in the public arena. Reporting for our news, I am Jared Higgs. Thanks a lot, Jared. It seems you can expect some rain and partly cloudy skies this week. Meteorologist Greg Thompson joins us from the Weather Center with your first look. Good evening, Greg. Thanks, Candino, and good evening, everybody. A beautiful evening outside our studios right now. Temperatures comfortable uh, in the upper 70s. Mostly clear skies. Your winds are still a little breezy out there. East, north, east to easterly winds at 30 miles per hour, and your feels like temperature. A very comfortable 76. Satellite view, quiet around our area today. High pressure remains in firm control of our weather. Some patchy clouds moving over the island chain. Small sporty showers expected with one or two of those clouds. But all in all, it should be a very quiet evening. And we expect winds to start falling off by tomorrow. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, the groundbreaking ceremony signaling hundreds of jobs on the way. Plus, the 80% uptick that has one hotel operator happy. And later, find out the breastfeeding initiative aimed at education. That's coming up when our news returns. FTX Digital Markets breaking ground on a site set to house its new multi-million dollar campus. The site, which is situated next to Pictay Bank, will house FTX's he headquarters, a hotel and athletics center. Speaking at today's event, Prime Minister Philip Davis saying the project will create hundreds of jobs. This development is, is likely to have at least 400 persons employed during the construction stages. Um, I'm just being advised by by the founders and CEO of, of um, FTX that they're continually hiring Bahamians. I've met at least eight or nine key uh, personnel from, the, from, the, from FTX who are all Bahamians holding very um, strong positions. Since opening its headquarters here last September, FTX, the world's number two cryptocurrency exchange, has hired dozens of Bahamians and taken up most of the office space in the Viridian Corporate Center. The company was set to do nearly $1 billion in revenue last year. FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried says the Bahamas was the right fit for the company because of its strong regulatory environment. We weren't sure where we'd end up. Um, and, and about halfway through that process. 
of sort of investigating the, the few countries that, that sort of like were investigating the possibility of creating regulatory regimes for cryptocurrencies and, um, and of sort of exploring what it would like to be there. Um, we sort of got, got word that um, one of them actually had already uh, passed a uh, cryptocurrency regulation uh, regime, one of the only jurisdictions in the world to do so, um, and that the uh, few emissaries who we had, had sent out to check it out um, had uh, a really, really good experience um, there. And that, that was the, the Bahamas. And, and I, I think about halfway through the process of trying to figure out where we were going to be, um, the Bahamas sort of jumped all the way to, to the front. And Exuma businesses are still reaping the harvest from the island's regatta last week, with one hotel operator telling our Bertha New McDermott that the property has seen an 80% uptick. All in, probably 80% from a normal weekend would be my guess, an 80% bump across the board in food, beverage, and room rates. The Peace and Plenty Resort, located in the heart of Georgetown, Exuma, boasts of an 80% hike in profit due to the regatta this past weekend. Principal owner Steve Harrington confirmed as much, saying it was needed. It was excellent. It's uh, much needed, especially after two years of COVID. Um, at first, uh, it appeared it wasn't going to happen. Then in the last month and a half, things changed and, and, and the government brought it through. So we're very grateful to them for that. Um, yeah, we were fully, fully booked up. The restaurants were booked. It's a challenge to handle it, but, uh, but it worked. The Exuma Regatta began Wednesday evening and wrapped up with a closing ceremony and cultural component Saturday night. The island was packed as locals and guests all descended. Officials have long bragged about the economic benefits for the island. To accommodate the load, Harrington said the resort had to implement initiatives like bringing on new staff. And it's simply adding an extra boat or two for our shuttle, um, adding some extra staff and handling all, you know, all the all the people coming through the restaurants, extra bartenders, that sort of thing. Uh, but we planned on it, we knew it was coming. Well, actually, once we knew it was coming, we, we quickly got ready. He added the influx was expected, but hotels and rental car companies weren't the only businesses to benefit from the much anticipated event. With regard, you have an influx of people. Where the influx of people comes, uh, resources, money, um, disposable income, where they could spend on the island, not only in hotels, not only on cars, but they enjoy what Exuma has to offer. You had people, even though it's regarded, still going to see the swimming bakes. Uh, you still have party boats uh, uh, who are associated with, with Regatta, the tours association, the taxi drive. I mean, listen, Exuma on the whole um, has benefited from Regatta this year. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. Thanks, Berthony. Eleuthera, poised for a renaissance in the Bahamas business outlook is looking to get you connected. The Eleuthera business outlook kicks off the hybrid event this Thursday, April 28th, exploring how Bahamians can take advantage of opportunities on that island. President of the Councilors Limited, Joan Albury, explains. We know that there is a renaissance taking place in Eleuthera. We know, for example, that with the Disney project alone, you're talking about $450 million that is going to be invested in Eleuthera. You have the Ritz-Carlton coming on board, so there's a lot of development going on in Eleuthera. Central and South Eleuthera Member of Parliament Clay Sweeting will deliver the keynote address from the Eleuthera Business Hub. The theme for this outlook is beyond recovery into growth. And that's our theme for the year because we believe that that's the space that we're in now. Regional Public Affairs Director at Disney, Joseph Gaskins, will give attendees an update on the Disney project on that island, as well as potential opportunities while Rev Vice President Charnett Thompson will present on ways to use technology to boost your business. To learn more and register for the event, visit tclevents.com. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank.
This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the break, you might actually be able to leave your masks at home soon. Find out when and if coming up. Plus, how rising sea levels and global temperatures have put the Bahamas in a unique situation. And later in sports, Marcellus Hall tells us the Team Bahamas falling short in rugby sevens and later the struggle for DeAndre Ayton and the Suns. We have the details when our news returns. This is our news. Welcome back. Plans are underway to lift the country's mask mandate in the coming weeks. Prime Minister Philip Davis giving the timeline to reporters this morning saying residents acting responsibly has this administration considering further relaxing the COVID rules sooner rather than later. Jasmine Brown reports. Masks have been a staple of the COVID-19 pandemic for the past two years. But according to the Prime Minister, they could soon become a thing of the past. They are now considering the relaxation, further relaxation of the mask mandate. Right now, outdoors, it's been relaxed. It's only indoors until we, until we are sure that some of the indoor venues could have what I call proper air ventilation. The Prime Minister making the comments on the sidelines of a groundbreaking ceremony for FTX Digital Markets' new West Bay Street headquarters. Asked if the relaxation of the mask mandate will come before summer, the Prime Minister replied, If I were to put a timeline on it, but by summer, by summer for sure, and even sooner, as, as I said, we have recognized that it is the Bahamians who have truly a step up to the fore and being responsible. And as long as they remain responsible, relaxations will come. Last week, Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper indicated that the government was considering the further relaxation of COVID rules in the Bahamas, noting that hotels were pushing for the end of the mass mandate and testing to enter the country. Davis says, however, that testing at the borders will likely remain in place for the time being, and he explains why. I don't know whether we're there yet uh, to eliminate testing altogether. I know some countries have, but um, as, you, as we have discovered, most of our cases to date are really related as travel related. And if, uh, if it's all travel related, then we need to ensure that people who are coming in are not bringing the virus with them. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. With the Bahamas considering entering into carbon markets, you may still be wondering what they are and how carbon is traded. Christina Dragovich tells us more. Rising sea levels and global temperatures have put the Bahamas in a unique situation as the world eyes the nation's multiple carbon sinks as a way to cut greenhouse gas emissions. Deputy Director of the Nature Conservancy, Shanique Smith, says the Bahamas is rich in carbon sinks, but only if we protect them. When we're talking about storing in natural systems, that's forests, so our pine forests, our coppice, or you can be, it can be stored in like mangroves or in seagrasses, etc. Those resources hold significant potential, potential that the Bahamas is recognizing and the world is taking note. Overall, we are storing more carbon dioxide and other gases than we're releasing. So we have significant mangrove ecosystems, we have significant seagrass beds. We also have, still have a lot of vegetated land that's not been um, clear, clear cut or whatever the case may be. So this is attracting a lot of persons to the Bahamas when they look around globally for where is their potential value and opportunity for a carbon market for people to be selling carbon credits. The Bahamas has made commitments under the United Nations Climate Change Convention. That convention includes carbon markets and how they can be used to mitigate climate change. 
However, the concept and value of carbon credits may still be a bit tricky. There's some calculation behind the scenes that's done to come up with the equivalent of one ton of emissions of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. While the government hopes that carbon markets will reap great monetary rewards, Smith and other environmentalists hope the money goes back to where it's really needed. It is hoped, at least particularly for persons like myself in the environmental field, that when you are a, a, a person who is selling a carbon credit, ultimately you're doing this to reduce some of the drivers and um, things that are contributing to carbon um, climate change, but also that you will also protect the environment. Carbon markets have been around for some time. With the tabling of legislation in the House of Assembly, government has set out a framework for how the Bahamas conducts business in that space. Reporting for our news, I'm Christina Dragovich. Thanks, Christina. Team Bahamas falling short at the Rugby Sevens. Meanwhile, DeAndre Aiden and the Suns struggle with the Pelicans. And a new youth cricket program introduces young high schoolers to the sport. Marcellus Hall has all the latest in sports. All right, thanks a lot and welcome to our sports on a Monday, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. It was a busy sports weekend, a lot going on. but. Taking center stage was our Bahamas national rugby team as they took part in the RAN Rugby Sevens event at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Let's take a look and see how there was their progress. The Rugby Americas North or RAN qualifiers wrapping up yesterday at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. The Bahamas national squad finishing with a one and four win loss record with their only win coming against the British Virgin Islands 26 to 12. For the Bahamas, it was their first international competition in five years. Team Canada was the overall winner. They beat Jamaica in the championship. On to the NBA, where DeAndre Ayton and the Phoenix Suns continued their first-round playoff series with the New Orleans Pelicans. Suns without leading scorer Devin Booker. They couldn't get it done. They fall 118-103. Series now tied at two apiece. Ayton leading his squad in scoring. He finished with 23 points, eight rebounds, and a block. Game 5 set for Tuesday. And plans announced last week for a new youth cricket program designed to introduce junior high age students to the sport. Program director is Corey Edwards. Well, I'm going to tell you, I was pleasantly surprised when I came to the schools. I mean, the kids and the, and the PE teachers are very, very keen and interested to learn a new sport. Some people know about it already, but the thing is about it, you want the enthusiasm and that has been the forefront of the whole program. And then, you no, know, obviously, I would point them in the right, right, right direction. WNBA star John Quell Jones now getting endorsement deals. The league MVP featured in the latest State Farm commercial, along with Atlanta Hawks point guard Trey Young and Dallas Mavericks center Boban Majanovic. And that's your Monday look at sports. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Marcellus. And Greg is back in the Weather Center with your extended forecast. He's got a look of the week ahead. And later, education on breastfeeding on display in a new campaign. We'll tell you all about it. It's coming up when our news returns. Welcome back to our news and thanks for staying with us. It's time now for a look at your extended weather forecast. Meteorologist Greg Thompson, he's back in the weather center with all the latest. Greg? Thanks, Ken Candino, and welcome back, everybody, for our second look at weather. That ridge of high pressure that's been dominating our weather for the last couple of days, generating those very windy conditions. Starting to weaken, those winds are down to cautionary levels right now, out of the east at around 15 to 20 knots. And it's still bringing in some very low-level clouds and some moisture in the form of some spotty showers across our area. That high will continue to slide out towards east over the next couple of days, paving the way for a weak frontal boundary. Well, actually, the frontal boundary across the central portion of the United States is strong right now, but the tail end of that should get near by Thursday, Friday time frame with a couple of isolated showers. And once again, our winds expected to pick up for the weekend as that high continues to push out and another high builds in behind that frontal boundary. Boating forecast for the Northwest Bahamas tonight to tomorrow. Caution flag posted for you guys for swells. 
It winds easterly 10 to 15 knot seas, 2 to 4 foot over the ocean and up to 6 feet in some swells. Your low tide will be at 10.58 tonight for the central and southeast Bahamas. There's a caution flag for you down there as well. Northeast to east winds, 15 to 20 knots. Your seas will be running 4 to 6 feet over open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In your extended forecast over the next couple of days, conditions rather nice. The temperatures will stay in the low 80s. Your winds are going to fall off by tomorrow. And then we expect a frontal boundary in your Thursday, Friday time frame with our winds picking up once again for the weekend. Before I get out of here, let me just say happy birthday to my father who celebrates a milestone today. Happy birthday. Back to you, Kendino. Thanks a lot, Greg, and happy birthday wishes for your father from the team here at Our News. And finally, the Bahamas National Breastfeeding Association taking a major step to get the message to the public. It's our final story tonight, and a billboard on East Street North is designed to raise awareness about the importance of breastfeeding. BNBA President Trinika Hall. We want everyone to work together like a, a hand and a glove to get our breastfeeding rates up to 50%. So what is it now? Um, it's 18.6, 18.7%. 18 that, that's not good. What, how did we fall behind so quickly? Um, a lot of it, a lot of issues are happening that some people um, just believe because they have to go back to work, they gotta give the child the formula. Some people believe their human milk is just not enough. Um, so they believe a lot of myths. Well, the group getting support from Education Minister Glennis Hannah Martin and Centerville Member of Parliament Jomo Campbell. It speaks about the bonding with the mother. It speaks about the immunity to an antibodies. It speaks of being a perfect food. Breastfeeding is so fundamental and so natural and so correct. Somehow in our social reality, it's gotten sidelined. And the, the whole effort for these distinguished um, health professionals, and I commend them for their continued and sustained work. The whole thrust is to get it back into the centerpiece of health. Believe it or not, that is a key element in social structure and sustaining the social structure because if you look at almost all of the problems we see in society now, it really goes back to the re-establishment or the disintegration of the family structure. And no better place to start than from a baby to the mother's breast. That's the beginning. Now to find more stories like this and for all the latest news, visit Our News Bahamas on Facebook. Well, thank you for joining us for Our News tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Kendino Knowles. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. And until then, have a wonderful evening.